Hi, I'm Mayor Debbie Brinkman and welcome to The Littleton Show. Now a lot of folks may think the Littleton City Council is dull and boring, but there's a whole nother side to us. Take a look. I went to Inglewood High School. From there I went to UNC, played a little football up there. At UNC I did play a whole lot of lacrosse. For a living, I'm a real estate broker. I'm the director of property operations for a company that manages commercial and affordable housing. I have a couple side jobs that I do. One is I work for the Denver Broncos as the statistician. I am the, the spotter. I also work for the Denver Outlaws and I am the table supervisor. During the Bronco games, I basically call out every play what's going on. Who makes the, the run, who makes the reception, who makes the tackle, who causes the, the fumble. 35. Yikes. Touchdown. The information that I provide, I relay it on to individuals who put it into the computer, which goes to NFL in New York. It becomes the official information for the NFL. It affects the contracts of the individual players. While it's high pressure, it's extremely fun. <laughs> Minutes. This is my ninth season. I replaced the gentleman who is 84. So when once you get this job, generally people don't like to give it up. Okay, the, uh, the guy who tripped him up was 11. Mary Pat and I have lived in Littleton since 86 is when we moved into our house. We have two daughters. One just graduated from college. The other, our other daughter, will graduate this year from DU. I started karate when I was in high school. It was after wrestling season was over with and my brother was doing karate at that time. I was able to convince a couple of my buddies to join me. So we started way back in the uh, early 70s. From there, uh, through college, I didn't train regularly. It wasn't until after graduating from college that I decided that I really wanted to make karate a part of my life. So now, uh, uh, 30 some years later, here I am still training. I've seen hundreds of people come and go. This is Sensei Yutaka Yaguchi's dojo. He's been here for well over 30 years. I've been training with Sensei for over 30 years. It's a traditional Japanese dojo versus American style. Karate is not what you see on TV. Karate is hard work. I went to high school at Denver Lutheran and I did a lot in drama, was in a number of plays and did a traveling play with the school, visiting elementary schools, doing um, some theater with that. And then after high school I went to um, the University of Northern Colorado and I specifically went to that school because I wanted to be a nurse. Ended up deciding to go into journalism and mass communications and got a job with a student newspaper and uh, worked there for about a year and then the next year was elected the editor of the campus paper. After I graduated I got a job at the Greeley Tribune and I ended up at the Sentinel newspapers and uh, we were working as advertising manager there for a while and I decided that I wanted to get a little bit more engaged in advertising than just the journalism part of it so I then went to work for some advertising agencies and so I worked at a number of agencies around town but advertising just lost its fun for me and lost its excitement and so I decided you know I think I just want to try to do something by myself <laughs> so I quit I had done advertising for about 24 years so I quit and decided to become a professional organizer so I did and I started working and I got uh, a lot of business coming in and doing a lot of that and as I was going through that over the couple of years the clients started requesting design work to be done and I'd always been interested in design and had always kind of done design freelance on the side so I added that shingle to my <laughs> work and now um, operate both of those lines of business and they work very well together and staying busy and hopefully helping clients become organized and well decorated <laughs> One of the most important members of my family is Bailey. He's my Cocker Spaniel, and he's 13, um, but he insists on walking a couple miles every day, so he's, he's still pretty spry. Um, both of my parents are here in Denver, and they're still married, 
and they still live in the, the same house where I grew up. My youngest sister is a chief in the Navy. She's been in for almost 30 years. And my other sister, Laura, is a principal, and now she's um, got a job as a deputy director on, for Denver Public Schools. My sister, Tammy, she has two children, Chad and Callie, and they're both teenagers now, but they are um, great kids and a lot of fun to, to go on bike rides with, and they love to go tubing, and uh, so we get to have a good time. I don't have a lot of spare time, but when I do, I really enjoy quilting. Um, I love to read and not counsel packets. I love to read novels. I've missed my books. I also love to garden. Love to get out there and just dig and pull and weed and plant. Um, and I really do enjoy getting together with small groups of friends and just, you know, relaxing, get, enjoying some good food and tasting a great bottle of wine and just having a good time and relaxing and enjoying each other. I grew up in New Jersey. Our house was uh, just outside of New York City. It was about the same distance as, as if you went up to 120th Avenue and looked back to Denver. That was how I saw New York City growing up. I lived in that area until I was in sixth grade, at which time my parents moved outside of Washington, D.C. to the Maryland countryside. I went to college in Virginia, to Washington and Lee University, which is in the Shenandoah Valley, an absolutely beautiful part of Virginia. I started college in 1966, and that was the height of the Vietnam buildup, and I decided that I would uh, go to ROTC. I'm glad I did. I was number 35 in the, the Vietnam lottery of 1969, which would have meant that I would have gone for sure. And I did join uh, as a lieutenant in 1970. I spent three years on active duty. I was an uh, infantry officer. I went to airborne and ranger schools. I ended up spending most of my time in Europe, and I left the military active duty in 1973, came to Colorado and joined the National Guard in 1974, and stayed active until 1999. I served in Operation Desert Storm. That was uh, my opportunity to go back on active duty. I was a military police battalion commander, and I had responsibility for six military police companies. That was about 800 soldiers. And we were uh, responsible for security of an enemy prisoner war camp. And during the course of that six months, we uh, provided security for over 24,000 prisoners. You know, being in law enforcement was just a great opportunity in the 70s and 80s for me. I was very fortunate and was uh, appointed a sergeant earlier in my career than, than many. And I was a sergeant for over 17 years. Later, I was promoted to lieutenant. And at that time, lieutenants ran the divisions, and I continued up as a, eventually as a division commander. Earlier this year, I had completed 37 years, and I thought it was uh, time for me to look at some other opportunities, but I had a wonderful career in the police department. I have a great family. I have two wonderful kids. They went to school here at St. Mary's and to Mullen, and then to uh, Colorado State University. And both kids are doing really well. I have a great wife who uh, ran for city council and became a council member at large. And I'm very proud of that because now I'm a council member at large and we may be the only husband and wife in the history of Littleton who've done that both. From council, she went on to become an Arapahoe County Commissioner. We've lived in Littleton for the last 20 years. We've been married for 23 years. When I was in high school, I became involved with motorcycles and fast cars. And I had my first motorcycle at age 16 and I still have a motorcycle up till today, but I don't ride as perhaps as much as I'd like to. Recently, since retiring particularly, I've had more opportunity to go hiking in Colorado than I've ever had before. And the, te the technology has changed so much from what I learned back in the original days of the military. This is really all you need to eat with. If you take more than that, you're probably carrying more than you need. In order to cook, this is all you need, and this is less than a couple pounds. It's all titanium. It's cookware and it's a very small stove that uses canned fuel. Putting that on there, that's all you need. You used to have to carry all kinds of water filtering devices and pumps. Not anymore. This is what's called a SteriPen. It's a UV light. Place it in the water that you just took out of a stream stir it around a little bit, and in a minute and a half, you'll have water that's totally fit to drink. 
You need sticks. They add to your balance. They take the weight off your knees. And because of the weight that you're carrying, it keeps your back and your hips from uh, being sore at the end of the day. Strongly recommend these. You know, one of my proudest accomplishments is getting this park named after me. And I have people all over the town who ask me, why is it that the park was named after me? And I'd like to tell you some of the reasons why I think it happened today. Well, this park is located at, uh, on Bellevue, just west of Lowell Boulevard. And the dedication was done in 2000, right after I retired from the South Suburban Board. And it was dedicated uh, uh, for service to South Suburban Board of Directors and to the Littleton community. And that's what the plaque used to say that was stolen a, a few months ago. And then there's a plaque over here on a rock that was taken that was my memorial to my wife. I got involved in civic affairs when I was in high school as a leader in, in the high school community. Went on to college, was president of my fraternity, president of the men's service organization, graduated, started teaching school, got involved in all the professional organizations and moved to North Glen after I got married, was uh, elected to my first uh, elected position in 1968 as a Republican precinct committee man. Then in 1969, uh, I was elected to North Glen City Treasurer, 1971 to North Glen City Council, uh, left there and moved to Littleton in 1975 was appointed almost immediately to the building, Municipal Building Authority, which built City Hall, and then in 1977 was elected to Littleton City Council. Uh, did that until 1985, and then in 1986 I was elected to South Suburban Board. Left there in 2000, uh, retired from January, and my wife passed away a few months later. So I decided I needed something else to do and got involved in, ran for City Council in 2001, and here I am. My wife, Jenny, passed away in 2000, and this is known as Jenny's Garden. She loved flowers, and after she passed away, South Suburban decided we'd raise money to put in the picnic shelter and these benches, and, and we dedicated this area to her uh, in September of 2000. I graduated from college in 1957 and moved to Colorado and started teaching school in the Sheridan School District. I spent the first 16 years as a teacher of either math or in elementary school, and then the next 19 years as an elementary or middle school principal, where I retired in 1992. One of the things that I've done for is make collections for each of my children. I have five of them. So I've collected elephants, I've collected toy miniature trains, I've collected pineapples, straw ornaments, and uh, cats. Uh, so I've got that. I also enjoy Christmas. That's my favorite time of the year. I have uh, five uh, what they call feather trees that are branches that are spread apart, and I have only tree-shaped ornaments on it. I've got several hundred tree-shaped ornaments on those five trees, and I have have a dining room I set up with uh, uh, silver ornaments. There's over 800 silver ornaments on there. Uh, nutcracker collection, there's over 240 nutcrackers in the collection. And uh, then I've got a tree with nothing but antique ornaments on it that were my mother's and my wife's mother's uh, ornaments. And so uh, I love Christmas. Another one of my hobbies is traveling, and I've done a lot of it in the last 12 years. I've had the opportunity, primarily because my middle daughter and her husband have traveled all over the world for his job. He's a mining engineer. And so I've been to Chile several times. I've been to South Africa. I've been to Sweden. I've even been to Antarctica, but not because of my son-in-law, just because I wanted to go. And uh, traveled a lot. Uh, I really would like to go to China one of these days, so that's my, my next trip. My undergraduate degree was a uh, degree in economics and management from Albion College, a small liberal arts school in southern Michigan. From there I went into public accounting, I did sit for and um, ultimately passed the CPA exam. Uh, worked in public accounting for about four years and then went back to graduate school to get a master's of business administration. Came out and worked in Chicago for four or five years before moving to Denver, was in the energy industry, uh, had a transition into telecommunications after that, and then about oh, six years, six, seven years ago, I uh, left the telecommunications industry and now serve as the chief financial officer of ARC Thrift Stores. All of this pretty much started with, with the twins, Mark and Eric. We've got three kids, uh, Jay and then the twins, Mark and Eric. Mark and Eric were born very premature and have a lot of significant developmental disabilities. We got plugged in with the Ark of Arapaho and Douglas, which at the time had volunteer board members sitting on the Ark Thrift uh, Board of Directors. 
So that was my entree to it. And then the opportunity to come on full time and, and essentially run finance for the company opened up in, in 06. The company exists to fund the ARC chapters who provide advocacy services for people and family members who have developmental disabilities. Uh, we've distributed over $52 million to the ARC chapters in the state of Colorado. Uh, however, in the past six years since the senior management team has been on board, we've distributed over $20 million, or roughly 40% of that number. So uh, we're very, very proud of the trajectory and the accomplishment. I did, a number of years ago, decide that I'd never run a marathon, and I really wanted to do that. Uh, I don't know if it's a bucket list item, but maybe so. And I got it in my head that I'd, I'd start running these things and run one a year starting at, at uh, say, 46 and run the last one uh, for over five years when I turned 50. Well, the first one I uh, trained for and actually did run was, I think I was 46, and I went to Anchorage, Alaska, which on the off chance that I ran it and I just hated it. I wanted it to be somewhat memorable location. So uh, I did... Uh, did do that, and the fun part about that was uh, Anchorage turns out to be you know pretty close to sea level. So when you're training at altitude, you actually get a little bit of bump. Uh, the next couple of years, I actually ran steamboat uh, two years in a row, but I figured three probably rounded to five, so I declared victory and went home. One of my principal hobbies is is reading, and uh, I probably don't read as much as I'd like to for pleasure. But a couple of years ago, when the first Sherlock Holmes movie came out, uh, it really struck my fancy. And what I decided to do was go over to Bemis Library and check out uh, some of the Sherlock Holmes stories. And so essentially, uh, I found the two-volume annotated set of the complete Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And in honor of, of Sherlock, uh, I would just quote um, Dr. Watson, uh, who said, Excellent, he cried. Elementary, said Holmes. Well, I was born in Vallejo, California in 1968. Um, my folks were going to Brandeis University and had me out there. So my folks got divorced when I was four. My dad's family's from Denver. So we moved back to Colorado. So I grew up in North Boulder. And after high school, decided that I wanted to go to college. So I applied to California State University in Long Beach, among others. But I got accepted there. And I had had this great California patrol officer, told incredible stories. And he was a criminal justice instructor. So I went and changed my major to criminal justice. So I applied for and uh, became a police cadet at the Signal Hill Police Department and worked through there actually through the rest of my college years. A month after I graduated, I had decided I was not interested in uh, living in Southern California and I moved, I moved back to Colorado, applied for a variety of law enforcement jobs and ended up with the city of Boulder actually in uh, parking services, parking administration within the downtown and the University Hill area. Spent the next nine plus years working for the city of Boulder. I applied for getting my master's degree at the University of Colorado in Denver. Again, continued to work for the city and got my master's degree. Then moved into the city of Uray, uh, Frisco, and obviously now with the city of Littleton. In my personal time, I love to spend time with my family. I've been married to my wife, Marie, for 11 years. Um, she is Canadian by birth and naturalized as an American citizen. Grew up in the Boston area and spent about the last 15 years here in Colorado. We have one daughter, Anna, who is 10 years old and goes to Damon Runyon and is in fifth grade there and will be picking a middle school before too long. It, Anna loves being outdoors, doing all kinds of activities, but her real passion is gymnastics. She's been doing gymnastics uh, for several years now, and last year in fourth grade she joined the team and went to regionals and ultimately went to state last year and placed uh, fourth in uh, all around in her age group, in her category, and second in floor. I'm a Colorado guy, I love doing everything outside. I snowboard, I ski, in the recent years very much got into road biking, enjoy that a lot, 
Um, last couple years I've been doing some running, uh, my longest run. I've got to catch up with many others I know that have done marathons, but I did the Denver Half Marathon a couple years ago. Very much enjoy the Littleton Trail System. And one of my recent passions that I got into uh, in early tw in 2010 was scuba diving. Got certified in 2000, early January of 2010. I've now got almost 90 dives under my belt. Since then, I'm a dive master, uh, which is the first step into the professional realm. Uh, my daughter Anna is a certified daughter, got certified at 10. We've been to Roatan, Curacao, uh, Cozumel, Hawaii, um, Jamaica, uh, the Keys, to dive all kinds of places. Just absolutely love the diving. And having my daughter have, um, have the same passion that I do, and that dad and daughter connection going out and being able to do it. My wife, Murray, is very um, satisfied and comfortable on holding down the sand on the beach. Well, I was born in Laurel, Maryland and was raised there and stayed there until I went away to college. I grew up with a mother and father and a sister who's tw 21 months older than I am. I went to a very small um, private school called Western Maryland College it's now called McDaniel College. This was a national competition for college students to go to the Soviet Union, Poland, and Czechoslovakia. It was the fifth year of the Eisenhower Cultural and Scientific Exchange Program. And so I was just very fortunate to get selected. We went from Moscow um, as far south as um, we could almost spit across the Turkish border. So we had an incredible range of experiences. I got my master's degree in Arizona and fell in love with the West. So I went back to Maryland for two years to teach, um, to pay off a state scholarship that I had, and then um, heard about the job at ACC and immediately um, applied for that and was fortunate to be selected um, to work there. I didn't start my doctorate until the late 80s, and I focused on um, instructional technology. I was at ACC 36 years. I was department chair for many years. I taught mainly um, second semester composition and introduction to literature. Occasionally I taught uh, other um, literature courses. For reasons that I probably don't understand, I was faculty member of the year twice. I was the first faculty member to receive a Distinguished Faculty um, Teaching Award. Um, one of the highlights of my career was receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award from a state community college system organization. I met Reggie Rivers um, through ACC at a couple of fundraising events. Reggie was thinking about writing um, the book that now is called The Colony. It's about ants. The first part of it deals with ancient political history, and he asked my husband would he look at it um, to see if what he was saying was well grounded. And so I saw it and just thought, well, I'll read it just for the heck of it. And when he came to talk to my husband about his feedback, I said, oh, well, I wrote in it and scribbled some things. If you'd like my feedback, I'd be glad to give it to you and we hit it off instantly and have worked really closely together on that book and um, another book that he wrote. When I moved um, to Colorado, I was totally enthralled with the outdoors. I um, took the Colorado Mountain Club basic mountaineering um, program and also did National Outdoor Leadership School in Lander, Wyoming and really refined my skills. And then for many years, I led hikes and ski tours. And one of the great joys of my mountaineering experience was meeting my husband. I like to knit, and they asked me to show you something I knit. So I like to knit scarves, and I um, make them for my husband. He has about 10 of them. And I make them for other people, um, just out of friendship. I have knitted a hat. I love innovating with recipes. Um, 
I love taking um, photographs and drawing and doing just about anything that I can with my hands. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, and when I was four, my parents moved to Parma, Ohio, which is a south suburb of Cleveland, and that's where I spent most of my growing up years, from uh, four until I went away to college. I went to the University of Notre Dame, and my undergraduate major was mathematics. What brought me to Colorado was a professional opportunity, uh, working with an insurance financial services conglomerate uh, that's actually worldwide. Uh, but they had an operation here in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I'm an actuary by professional training and the responsibility was that of uh, chief product actuary for the firm. My wife is Kathy Schwartz. Uh, she has her own professional opportunity now. We remarried six years ago and uh, recently came off of a honeymoon, uh, so to speak. Uh, I have five children, uh, 34 to 18 is their ages. So uh, my oldest has four children at home and uh, next has a couple and then the Enigma is the middle child. Uh, she's the one that lives in Florida. Uh, she's the one that doesn't like cold weather. Uh, the next son is ready to graduate from the University of Notre Dame. So uh, he spent a year in study at Chile uh, at the University of Santiago. So uh, his Spanish skills are very, very good. Uh, the youngest took some Chinese, Mandarin, in high school, and he's set to graduate. He has acceptances at multiple universities. One of my favorite things to do in, in Littleton is walk along the Highland Canal. It's uh, just a, a wonderful location and some of the great vistas are, are viewable from a walk that's within close distance of our home. Uh, didn't start playing ice hockey until an adult, so it's kind of a, a strange piece, but a uh, little story that I like to tell folks is I, I play goalie, so come on, bring it on. Take, give me your best shot. Uh, the other part is uh, Kathy and I enjoy very much traveling and we recently returned from a trip to Thailand. One of the neat things we had an opportunity to do is, is something they referred to as homestay uh, during the trip where we had an opportunity to stay with families and one in particular near Chiang Mai during dinner uh, there were some children uh, that came and played the traditional historical instruments that they have there and they entertained us during dinner and after dinner had a chance to show off their, their instruments and uh, perform traditional dances with us and uh, w along with the family and the folks that were in our group that were traveling together uh, we had a chance to uh, uh, somewhat autograph a, a lantern, put some of our wishes attached to it, and to lan uh, launch one of those candle lanterns and watch it float off into the sky. So it was really a, a neat experience. We stayed in a lot of guest houses and homes, and so uh, we gave each of them uh, a little bit of a, a memento. And uh, in some instances, they felt obligated to provide a return gift. And uh, this is one of them. It's a hand-carved turtle. Uh, and in the, the Buddhist culture, the, the turtle has some special significance. Uh, in Thai, Chang means elephant. Uh, elephant is the animal of Thailand. Uh, it has a particular story too. Uh, there's about 2,500 elephants that are working elephants in the, in the country. And there are about 1,000, uh, maybe as many as 2,000, that are only left in the wild in Thailand right now. So they're very concerned about uh, uh, the, the elephants. At the Buddhist temples, it, it, you are to, to wear conservative dress. And one of the things that uh, is often the case is folks will wrap themselves in a sarong to, uh, to cover their knees in what they do. And uh, this sarong we found particularly interesting because one of the things that is fairly common there and helps to control the bugs is the, the little geckos that they have that run around. Both of us have uh, been to uh, uh, Vienna, Austria, and across the Austrian countryside, had a chance to visit that. Uh, we've been to Rome, Great Britain, we've been to Canada, of course, up near Whistler, the site of the Olympics this past year, and a few years ago we had visited Beijing, China, the year before the Olympics as well. My favorite thing about traveling is visiting with the people and having a chance to, to talk with the, with the local folks and uh, see where they like to go for meals and uh, if the chance arises, having a chance to share a family meal with, with folks in different locations across the globe.